Welcome to the Oak Lords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making an adorable little clutch that is great for beginners, great for any of you guys who are just kind of in a rut and you're like, I want to make something quick. I want to make something cute. Today, we're going to be making the envelope clutch, and this comes to us from Noodlehead. So this little cutie patootie here can have a lot of variations. There's a lot you can add. There's a lot you could leave off. You can make this as involved and long a project or a very quick sew. So I'm going to show you my first version right here. This is the small size. Now the pattern does have two sizes. There's a large and a small. So you can see on the front here, I have this little button. That's a magnetic closure. It's a magnetic rivet. So when I open it up, blah, blah, blah. how cute is that? I used waterproof canvas on the inside. I used a cotton woven kind of like quilting cotton on the exterior. It does have piping. Piping is completely optional. I'm going to be honest with you. I love the way piping looks. I don't like working with it. I just, I just don't do it enough to where I'm comfortable with it. But for the sake of the tutorial today, we will be working with piping. I'm not going to show you how to make piping. I will include some video links down in the description of other people who have gone through how to make piping. Those are the videos I use to make my own. Um, in the future, maybe we'll do a piping video. We'll see. But you can see this is a pretty simple clutch. It has a flap opening and then it has one zipper pocket, one slip pocket. Both of those pockets are completely optional. And then on the back, you can see we just attach the flap like that. And then we have a cute little wristlet strap. I don't know. This is, again, it's a quick summer project. It's one of those projects where, you know, you're so busy and you have a couple hours free where you can just go in the sewing room and have some you time. And you want to finish something. You don't want to just work on something. You want to finish something. This is this is an item you could finish. And, and it's really cute. You can get so crafty with this, as always. If you have an embroidery machine or maybe like a Cricut machine or anything like that, you could put someone's name right here on the flap. I don't know. There's a lot you could do with this. I just love it. So thank you so much, as always, to Noodlehead for allowing me to use your patterns on my channel. I love Noodlehead patterns. They are some of the most like classic, sleek shapes. Most of them are completely beginner friendly. Even if they look challenging, they're written so well. With the beginner in mind, I don't know. I just feel like noodle head patterns are one of those ones you can just pick any of them. You're not gonna mess up. You're not gonna go wrong. It's gonna turn out amazing. I don't know. I love noodle head patterns, so expect a lot more on the channel. If you're new to the Oak Lords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comments section. I'll have timestamps for every single step of this. This is a pretty quick make. It comes together very nicely, but I will have timestamps and I will also have some tips and tricks if you want to change up the pattern just a little bit. Uh, there's really not a whole lot to change here. There's not a whole lot to add. I love the simplicity of this pattern. I love the chicness of this. So I only have like a couple tips on how to close it in the end, but that's it. All right, guys, let's get started. Since we're doing the large version, we're going to need a half a yard of exterior fabric and a half a yard of lining fabric, and then also a half a yard of accent fabric. So I'm just kind of mixing that up with all of this. So for my exterior, I'm going to be mixing up this fun print with this also little polka dot print. And then for the lining, my main part of my lining is going to be this pink water resistant canvas. And then the accent parts of the lining are going to be the green water resistant canvas. So today I'm going to be using fusible fleece. In the first version, I did use a Decoville light, which was very nice, but I do want to try it with the fusible fleece. So we're going to use fusible fleece today. And then for any piece that is a cotton woven material, we're going to be using so fuse. This can also be Pellon SF101, which is Pellon Shape Flex. Some sort of a woven interfacing that's going to make sure your material doesn't fray or stretch, and that also just kind of beefs up your thinner material just a little bit. You're going to need a half a yard of your fusible fleece and a yard of your woven interfacing. So I will be using piping today. Piping is not my favorite thing to use. It can be a little finicky, uh, but I will be using some. You can buy pre-made piping or you can make your own. I did make my own here. I do not have a tutorial over how to make this yet, but I have a couple link down in the description that I really like. Uh, and those are the ones I use when I'm making piping. Next is a five inch or longer zipper. This is optional. Um, a lot of times we like to turn a bag through the zipper pocket. So you could use that if you wanted to turn the bag through the zipper pocket instead of through the lining panels, then this would not be optional. But per the pattern, this zipper is optional. It's a very nice detail though. Then I have a half inch swivel hook and a half inch D-ring. I will be making this bag as a wristlet strap. 
If you wanted to make it a crossbody, you would need two D-rings and two swivel hooks. And then I have a zipper pull to go with my zipper. And as the closure for the bag, I'm gonna be using a magnetic snap. These are rivet magnetic snaps, meaning I can use my rivet press, and they don't have the little prongs on the back. They have a nice smooth cap, which I really like because it does protect your lining material from getting rubbed up against the prongs or anything like that. All right, and here's most of the other stuff I'll be using today. As always, lots and lots of clips. I have my wash away double sided tape. This is to help with the zipper. Then at the needles I'm using today are Microtex 8012 needles. In my bobbin, I'm just using a Guterman's thread from Joann's. In the needle for my top thread, I'll be using a Tex 45 weight thread. My bag tag today is this cute little cork one. As always, I will have a stiletto right next to the machine. I also have this stiletto seam ripper combo here that I'll keep for, you know, seam ripping because it's inevitable. Then I have a heat erasing friction pen. This is just what I will use to trace pattern pieces and mark in seam allowances. I do not suggest you use this on any of the material that's going to be seen in the end. And then if I was using vinyl, I would use this vinyl marking pen, but I just realized I'm not using vinyl today. Uh, I also have a one inch by six inch roller always. It's very handy. And then I have a small lighter to kind of clean up any loose threads. Of course, my rivet press, and then the magnetic snap dies to go with it to install the magnetic snap. I'm not using any rivets today. I, I, I There are places we can use them, but I'm not gonna use any rivets today. I'm only using this for the magnet. Okay, so let's go through all the pattern pieces. First, let's go through the exterior pattern pieces. You're going to have a strap either for your wristlet or for your crossbody. If you're not making your own strap, you're just using webbing, just cut it to the length that the pattern suggests, but I will be building my own wristlet strap today. This is a piece of cotton woven or quilt weight cotton, and it's already interfaced with its woven interfacing. Next, we have a cut for the flap. This is like a feature fabric, so if you wanna switch up your fabric, the flap is a fun place to put your print. This is also quilt cotton, and it's already interfaced. And then we have the two exterior pieces. These are different sizes, so make sure you pay attention to that. One is bigger than the other because we will be trimming down one to install the flap later. But these are both cotton woven and they both have their interfacing already applied. Next, we have the lining pieces. So from the lining, we have our flap. Then we're gonna have two cuts here. The larger cut is for the credit card slots and then the smaller cut is for the backing of those credit card slots. Next, I have the two main lining body cuts. And finally, I have two small rectangles. This is for the zippered pocket for the lining. This is optional. If you're not adding a zippered pocket, you don't need these cuts. Finally, I have my cuts of fusible fleece. I have one cut that is the same size as the flap and then two cuts for the body. They are different sizes. I am still debating if I wanna cut these down so that they're not in the seam allowance. I think it's just the seam allowance is going to have the fabric and it's gonna have the piping and it's also going to have the fusible fleece. So I'm trying to decide if I wanna trim down the fusible fleece so it's not in the seam or just leave it and let the seams be a little thick. I think I'm going to leave it just to see. For this first version, when I used the Decoville light, I did trim down the Decoville light so that it was not in the seam allowance, which did make it so that my seams were nice and skinny, but I don't know if I need to do that. So I'm gonna leave the fusible fleece the same cut as the material today. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is adhere my fusible fleece. I already applied all of the woven interfacing but now we gotta do the thicker interfacing. Now, this is optional. If you don't wanna apply any fusible fleece or decoval light, you don't have to. You can make this a very loose little clutch. Um, and if you're using a thicker material, for example, if you're using a cork maybe, or even like a lightweight vinyl, you don't need to add any interfacing at all. Even if you were using like a canvas material and you just applied the woven interfacing, you don't need to use fusible fleece. So if you're in a position where you're like, I really don't like working with fusible fleece, it's too bulky, you don't have to use it. You can use material that has just a tiny bit more structure than just like a quilt weight cotton and you'll be fine here. But when I apply fusible fleece, I like to take my fusible fleece cut and lay it so that's glue side up, that's the rough side, glue side up. And then I'll take my piece of fabric and I'll lay that right side up, wrong side down, so it's wrong sides together with fusible fleece. And I found that fusible fleece usually prefers to be adhered from the material side up. So it, it can be tricky to fuse this on if you're fusing it on from the back of the fusible fleece. It's like the heat can't quite get to the glue well enough, but it can access it better from your material side. And when I adhere the material, I use a hot 
iron, so a high temperature and steam. And I make sure I don't let my iron stay in one place. I keep it moving around. That seems to help prevent the fusible fleece from, you know, shriveling up and you get a kind of a wrinkled look. But I'm also not pushing down on the fabric and putting a lot of force on it, which would then stretch the material. I'm just lightly running my iron all over it. It takes a little bit of time. There we go, I've got the flap done. And so I'm gonna repeat that with my other two pieces of exterior and the associated fusible fleece. So they should be the same size. So now we're gonna work on the zipper pockets. So you're gonna need one of the lining cuts and your two zipper pocket panels, as well as your zipper, zipper pull, and double-sided tape if you're using it. We're gonna grab one of the zipper pocket panels and on the wrong side, we're going to mark a rectangle. So this is gonna be easiest if you first find your midpoints on all three of these pieces, at least on the top edge. So on the back side of one of your zipper pocket panels, you're going to measure one inch down from the top and you're gonna mark a horizontal line. Once you have that line marked, then mark another horizontal line parallel to that and three eighths of an inch down. And then you want this rectangle to be five and one quarter inch wide. So I find just dividing that in half. So it's gonna be two and five eighths inch away from the midpoint. So just mark away from this midpoint mark, two and five eighths inch to one side, two and five eighths inch to the other side. You should measure it, it should be five and one quarter. Now grab one of your main lining panels, laying it right side up, and then take your pocket that you have the marking on and lay it right side down. And we're going to line this up so it's centered on the lining main panel, and it's three quarters of an inch down from the top raw edge. I'm just going to grab some tape. This is Kimberbell tape. It is my favorite tape to use to hold material down. It is just the right amount of everything. Okay, so now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew right along this rectangle, just making sure your needle gets into these corner bits and then you pivot. So when I'm sewing, I will do everything I can to make sure my needle goes right in the corner and then I lift up my presser foot, keeping the needle down, turn my material and then continue sewing. I do that for each corner. Once you have that rectangle marked, go ahead and grab your ruler and mark yourself a midpoint horizontal line going down the long edge of this rectangle. Once you have that marked, you can take your pen and then just mark from the corner of the rectangle down between a 3 8 inch to a half an inch. I don't measure it. I just kind of go from the corner and then I draw a straight line to meet that middle line. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want it too close to these shorter edges. Do this for both sides. Then grab your seam ripper and rip right along the center of this on that marked line that you just made. Once you have that ripped, you can get your scissors and put your scissors in there and then just cut right along that middle line until you get to the tip of those triangles and then follow the diagonal line down and cut as close as you can to those threads. You don't cut the stitching, but cut as close as you possibly can to the stitching. Do this for both sides. Okay, now I'm gonna enlist the help of my iron for this step. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my pocket and push it through that hole. And when I do that, I'm making both of my lining cuts wrong sides together. Now this might fight you. It depends on the material you're using. Just do your best. Round it out, and I like to look from the front. If you're using water-resistant canvas, this is much easier. <laughs> First is a waterproof canvas. Water-resistant canvas, you can kind of just push it with your fingers and it's good to go. I'm gonna give it one light press. I don't press water-resistant canvas from the back side. I only press it from the right side. The back side of any water, anything type of material is usually a plasticky coating and that can gum up your your iron, so pressing it from one side should be good. Yeah, that looks great, nice and flat. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my zipper and I'm going to trim my zipper down so that it's wider than it needs to be. So I'm not measuring it, it's just bigger than my pocket. That's what I need. And then I'm going to apply my zipper pull. Once I have my zipper pull installed, then I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape and I'm going to line it up right along the outermost edge of my zipper tape trim it down. I'm gonna do this for both sides. So now with my zipper, so that when it's closing, it goes to the left. This is just my preference. I like my zipper to close going to the left. 
With the zipper facing that way, I'm going to remove the paper from the top edge of my zipper tape. And then I'm going to take my pocket, I'm keeping everything nice and flat like this, I'm going to lay my lining panel, so the lining panel is right side up, and centered over my zipper tape. And my zipper coils are centered going right along in the middle of this little opening here. There we go, once I have it where I want it, I'm gonna push down on that tape. Remember, I only removed the paper from the top edge. So now I'm gonna pull up my zipper pull, close it all the way to the left. That'll help me get the coils as straight as possible. There we go. And then I'm going to carefully flip up the rest of the material, take the paper off of the tape. There we go. Fold it back down and then just press along the bottom edge. So now my zipper tape should be adhered to the lining pocket, just like that. And now I'm going to top stitch around this entire rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I do prefer to back stitch over the coils, especially if you're gonna be using this hole to turn the whole bag out later. You wanna make sure you back stitch over the coils really well. Once you have that zipper installed, now you can flip this over and you can see my zipper tape is still longer than it needs to be. That's fine. I will trim it all down later. And now you're going to take your remaining zipper pocket panel and lay that right side down, matching it up with your previous zipper pocket panel. There you go. Grab some clips to hold this all together. And now I'm going to follow the pattern and sew along all four edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, just closing up this pocket entirely. However, you could use this pocket to turn the whole pouch out later, and that way you would really never see in the bag where the closing is, right? Because we will have to close up the lining, and this is the most hidden place to do that. So if you wanted to do that, all you're gonna do is not sew along this bottom edge, and you will flip this up. So you take both of these panels, flip them up by about 3 eighths of an inch, just like that, flip them both the same direction, both going one way, clip it, and then you're gonna sew along the side, the top, and the other side at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, making sure you backstitch really well down here, but you will leave the bottom edge open. And that is what you will turn the whole bag through later. I'm not doing that, I'm going to do the lining, but it is an option. It can be a little bit harder to turn the bag out through that small hole, especially since we have a flap and everything, but if you wanna keep it hidden, that's like a next step type thing to try. All right, so when we're sewing this, we do wanna make sure we sew it with the lining main body side up and we flip it out of the way. We are not sewing through this pink fabric at all. We're only sewing through the green fabric all around, all four edges, 3 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, once that's done, I'm going to just trim down any excess zipper tape I have. You can see I do sew my zipper tape into the seams of the pocket as well. You don't need to do that. Uh, I just like to. I, I've, I've had experience with the edges of zipper tape eventually making their way out through the opening just with wear and tear and use um, and probably just not the best sewing on my part. Uh, so this just makes sure by sewing them in the sides here, that's just not gonna happen. This zipper is going to last as long as it needs to last. So now we can put this panel to the side and then grab your card slot pocket. This is going to be the larger piece of your accent lining that we're going to be folding. So I'm going to work on the back side of this and I'm going to grab a ruler and I'm going to mark a series of lines on the back side of my card slot pocket. The longer sides are the left and right sides. The shorter sides are top and bottom. So I'm going to start from the top. Sometimes it's easier if you mark the top. So again, this is the back of the material and I'll just mark a little T. Um, while you're here, you might as well mark the midpoints on the top and bottom edges. So these are the shorter edges. That'll just make it easier for future steps. And now, per the pattern, I'm gonna mark a series of lines on the back. So since I used a heat erasing fabric pen for this, if I just do these one at a time and iron it, these will all get erased. So luckily with water resistant canvas, this stuff can fold very easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it all first and then press it. So for this first fold on the top, I'm gonna to fold the material right sides together. And as I'm folding this, I'm making sure that these sides are lined up. When you do these accordion credit card pockets, it's easy for it to start twisting one way or the other. So always keep an eye on the sides, make sure they're lined up. And then for the next one, I'm gonna fold the material wrong sides together. And as I do that, I can flip it over. You can see here's your first pocket. 
Okay, and then for the third one, again, right sides together. Doing your best to keep an eye on the sides. And then finally, for the fourth line on the bottom, wrong sides together. Here we go, and now that I have it all folded, I'll just get it all together. I'm working from the right side of this, making sure the edges are all nice and straight. And now I'm just gonna press it from the right side of the material. And I'm not using any steam or anything with this material. I'm just gonna do a dry iron. Just doing my best to get it as straight as possible. All right, once you have this pressed, now we're going to just top stitch right along the edge of each of these folded tops. So just the two top folded edges. We're gonna just top stitch, moving the material out of the way at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way down. Once you have your folded card slot piece all pressed, lay it right side up and then grab your pocket lining piece and lay that right side down on top of it. And we're gonna match up the edges. Now the nice thing about this is that you can kind of manipulate it if you need to. My pockets are a little on the short side so I can kind of pull them down a bit to line it up where I need it to go. Just line up all the edges as best you can and then clip together. All right, so try to remember which side is the top and which side is the bottom. This over here with the longer bit from the fold up, that's the top, right? Yes, that's the top. So on the bottom edge here, down here, we wanna leave about a two to three inch opening to turn this out. So I just marked about three inches centered on the bottom and I'm going to not sew in this little spot right here. So I'm gonna sew around all four edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance back stitching well at the beginning and the end, but not sewing between these two marks because I'm gonna turn this all out through that. Once you have this sewn, we're gonna go around and clip down all these corners. So I'm just clipping these corners at a 45 degree angle, getting pretty close to the thread, but not too close. And then I also like to clip little slits, kind of going along them, just like this. This helps the material spread out. You could trim down your seam allowance a little bit as well if you'd like but you don't need to. Now take your pocket and flip it right side out. I always forget to mention this tool, but it's one of my favorite tools. It's a turning tool and it's a metal one. And you can gently push along these corners and the seams and it'll help you get those nice little perfect corners without ripping anything. All right, once we have it turned out, let's roll out those seams really nice and let's press this to get it as flat as possible. So you can see we have the little hole on the bottom here. I'm just gonna kind of, if you just kind of pull on the material around it, it'll tuck in on itself. So what I'm paying attention to are these corners specifically on the bottom. Those are the tricky ones. The thicker the material you use here, the harder this is going to be. On the first bag, I used a quilt weight cotton, a cotton woven, and I interfaced that with just the woven interfacing, and it was pretty bulky. These seams got pretty bulky. So just using only the water resistant canvas, no interfacing, that's, that's the good stuff for card slot pockets. It's a lot easier to work with, especially when we have the folds in the seams like this. So now I'm just going to lay it out flat, make sure all the corners are good, and then just give it a light press with my iron. I'm not using any steam. I'm just trying to make sure this is nice and flat. All right, so now we're gonna go top stitch just along the top edge of this pocket at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab your lining panel that has a zipper pocket, or you can grab the other lining panel. It can be either one. But it's a really cute look when you center this underneath your zipper. I mean, that's sweet, isn't it? Okay, so the pattern doesn't give it exact measurements for this, but it just says to put it underneath your zipper pocket, but make sure you don't sew through the zipper pocket. So pull the zipper pocket up. You might wanna go ahead and like clip that to the top edge, just so you're not tempted to sew through it. And let's see, I wanna make this as easy as possible. I know I'll be sewing along the bottom here later, so I want at least three quarters of an inch down here. And I'll be honest, I am completely eyeballing this to see if it's centered. It looks pretty centered to me. Does it look centered to you? I think it looks pretty centered on the zipper. And I have it one inch down from the bottom edge of my zipper pocket. So that's, that's my marking, one inch down. I'm gonna grab some tape to hold this in place because this will not stay there when I move it to the sewing machine. So now I'm gonna sew along all three edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, starting at the top, going down along the bottom, going back up, back stitching at the beginning and the end, and I am making sure that I'm closing the hole on the bottom as I stitch this on. All right, now that we have it sewn in place, the last thing we wanna do is just sew right along the center of this pocket. 
So now again, another tool I forgot to show you in the beginning. This is a chalk marking tool. It is a must have in the sewing room. It's very handy. Uh, I'm going to use this to just mark a line going along the center of our card slot pockets. And there we go. Now we can put the zipper pocket back down. Isn't that a sweet little lining pocket? I think that's just, I think it's very, very cute. I like it. So now let's work on the wristlet strap. So for the wristlet strap, the first thing you're going to want to do is mark a line going along the center, along the long edges, just centered right along the back of it. Once you have that mark, you're going to take the long edge and match it wrong sides together up with that midpoint mark and press. Do this along the entire strap. You can see as I do that, my mark goes away. All right, once I have one edge, I'm gonna flip it around and then I'm gonna take the other long edge and fold it up wrong sides together to meet the raw edge I just put down. There we go. And then you can fold the whole thing in half like a hot dog. So you have two folded edges on one side, one folded edge on the other side, and just give it one final press. So once you have this strip done, you're going to measure two and a quarter inch from one of the short edges, and then cut your strap. And this shorter bit is gonna go with the D-ring, so set that to the side, and the longer bit will go with the wristlet strap. So let's first do the D-ring. For the D-ring, we're going to top stitch along both edges, the double fold and the single fold edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And now that this little cutie patootie is all stitched, we're gonna just thread it through our D-ring, fold it around. If you like, you can stitch these two raw edges together. I just clip them and put this to the side. Now we're gonna do the wristlet strap. So for the wristlet strap, don't top stitch anything yet. You're gonna grab your swivel, insert it onto the edge with the wristlet folded, pull it down quite a bit. There we go, keep everything folded as much as you can. And then take your material, kind of unfold it like this, and pull the material short ends right sides together, and then unfold your short edges completely. And you see how I'm lining them up, and then I'm going to pivot them 90 degrees. So I take them, I line up the short edges together just like that, and then I turn the whole unit 90 degrees like that. So they're perpendicular to one another. And then we're going to clip these together. And what you might want to do first is to draw a line. So let me show you. I'm working on the wrong side of the top material here and I can see the bottom edge of the bottom material peeking through. So on the top material, I'm going to mark a little tick mark right along the right side edge so I know where it needs to stop. I'm trying to figure out where I need to sew. And then I'm going to grab my small ruler and I'm going to line it up with this top corner of the top piece of material and also that little tick mark I just made. And then I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. And if this all comes undone, that's okay. That line is what we want. So now once again, reevaluating my material. Once again, pulling my material right sides together, short edges, pivoting at a 90 degree angle. And then lining up, I have this little diagonal mark. And now I'm just gonna stitch right over this mark, making sure I backstitch at the beginning and the end. Once I have that stitched, I'm just gonna trim off the little triangle bit over here, leaving about a quarter of an inch overhang from the stitching, that's my seam allowance. And then I'm going to finger press it open. You could also grab your iron and iron it open if you'd like, but finger pressing should be fine. And then I'm going to refold my material just like it was before. So it can be a little tricky just get part of it started and then the rest of it should come together. So as I refold it, I'm gonna grab some clips, clip it all together. All right, now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna to top stitch along both long edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'll be honest, this is a pretty small wrist strap. So if you have bigger wrists or you want this to be more loose, I would suggest lengthening this just a bit, but it is very cute. So I'm going to just pull. I like to pull the swivel hook over by the connector over here. That's where there's probably the, the like stiffest point. So I'm just gonna tuck my connector in right next to that where I have that seam. So now I'm gonna to go top stitch just right next to the D ring, just back and forth, back stitching a couple of times just to hold this swivel hook in place. 
Alrighty, wrist strap is done, and this would be a cute spot to put a rivet if you wanted to add a rivet. So I'm gonna take these and put these both to the side. So now we're gonna work on the flap. You're gonna need the exterior, the lining, and the piping for the flap. Now, like I said, piping is completely optional. It can be more trouble than it's worth sometimes, but let's go ahead and give it a go. So with piping, the piping side has like a little bump and then you have the raw edges of the material. The raw edges of the material go out, lining up with the raw edge of your flap. So I'm just gonna line this up all like that. And the one tricky thing about piping is you wanna make sure that you don't see the stitching. So piping is attached with some stitching right here. You don't wanna see that in the end. So what you have to do is measure your piping and make sure so I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So with a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I should just cover the stitching. That's the hardest thing with piping. And that's, I mean, that's what I found to be the most challenging part. And that all comes down to the size of the piping that you make or buy. So I'm just going to attach this. So I start on the straight edge over here. Once I get to this little corner piece here, I line up the edge of my piping and then I snip into the raw edge of the piping, right at that corner so that I can pivot my piping just like that. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go down this edge and get all the way down to this corner down here. And once I get to that corner, I'm going to trim into my piping so that I can just pivot like that. I'm going to continue going around, just lining it up with the straight edge, and then once I get to the corners, I trim into the raw bit of the piping so that I can turn it. If you have to do a couple different trims, that's fine too. Sometimes one isn't enough. Okay, so I've got the piping clipped on, and I'm going to base this on. When sewing anything that has piping in it, I will be sewing with a zipper foot. So I'm gonna base this on real quick at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so far so good. Once you have that, go ahead and trim down the piping. Now we're gonna grab the lining flap and lay that right side down against our exterior and piping. And we're gonna clip along the sides and the bottom, but leaving the top open. So now we're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, leaving the top straight edge open. Backstitch well at the beginning and the end. I am using a zipper foot and I'm just trying to get as close as I can to this little bump here where I know the piping is. If you wanna sew it from the other side to make sure, I mean, whichever side is easier, sew it from that side. You just wanna get as close as you can to that piping. Okay, now we're gonna clip down these corners. So I'm gonna go to all of my little corner bits here, clip them down. This will just allow it to get a nice sharp corner. There we go. And the corner bits over here kind of reduce some of the bulk. Now let's turn this out and see how it looks. Well, it looks like we did well on the piping, so that's good. That's always the tricky bit. I kind of sewed over some of the piping on this bottom corner, but I think it looks fine. So now let's flatten this out. Now, if you want to use an iron to press this nice and flat, you can. I actually like to use clips. Uh, I just find that it holds everything exactly the way I need it, better than ironing does. So I'm just kind of going along the sides here, flattening it out trying to line up the piping so it's nice and straight. I'll tell you what, I do not like working with piping, but I do like the way it looks. I just don't like working with it. All right, I got it nice and flat. Now I'm gonna top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Don't top stitch the top. We're gonna leave that open because we still have to install the magnetic snap. Okay, 
Okay, so the pattern does not mention where to place your magnetic snap. I find it's easiest to do the magnetic snap at the end. So we're gonna grab the one I made previously and we'll use that as guidance. So it looks like I measured about three quarters of an inch, well, between half of an inch and three quarters of an inch from the bottom edge, not the piping. So the bottom edge of the fabric about three quarters to a half of an inch up from there is where I place my magnetic snap. So you can see with my magnetic snaps, you can actually see the snap on the outside, which I do really like. I forgot that I was using uh, rose gold zipper tape. So I luckily have some rose gold magnetic snaps. So I'll go ahead and grab those for this. I'm using the 14 millimeter magnetic snaps. So let's find the midpoint by just folding this whole unit in half and I am going to install my magnetic snap without the rivet showing, even though it's beautiful, just so you can see how to do this if you're using a magnetic snap that has the prongs. So I mark the midpoint on this bottom edge by folding the flap in half, and I just use a little pin. And now I'm gonna use my small ruler, and I am measuring up about a half of an inch from the bottom edge of the fabric, not the piping, half of an inch from the bottom edge of the fabric. And I'm just going to mark a dot just like that. And if you're doing this with the magnetic snaps that have the prongs, you wanna do this mark on the lining side because you'll be installing the magnetic snap on only the lining side, not the exterior side. But since I'm using a magnetic snap with this beautiful rivet, I can mark it on either side because it's gonna go through all layers. If you're doing it just on the lining side, make sure you have a scrap of something like fusible fleece, Decoville light, even a scrap of a thicker piece of material to install the magnetic snap through as well as the lining. But I am just going to use my press to do this. So I marked my dot centered and half of an inch up from the bottom. And I'm just going to punch a hole through all the layers of material. And then I'm going to grab the male end of the magnetic snap and I'm going to insert that through the lining and go ahead and remove this pin. There we go. And then the cap goes on the exterior part. Now I like the way that looks. You don't have to install it. Even if you're using this system here, you don't have to install it through all the layers. You could just install it through the lining and still be fine. I'm gonna grab my press. I'm going to grab the bottom die that looks like a female magnetic snap. And then the top die. And then the top die is just looks like a rivet die, but it's for 14 millimeter. And then I can just insert my snap and press it down. And there we go. The flap has the rivet, it's all ready to go. It has the piping, it turned out better than expected. That's great. So now set the flap to the side, grab your exterior back, and this is the one that is taller, and you're actually gonna measure down one and a half inches from the top edge and cut. So if you fused your interfacing on like I did, all we have to do is take a ruler, measure one and a half inches down from the top long edge, and slice with our rotary cutter. All right, so now we have two pieces. We have our back top and our back bottom. And now I suggest finding the midpoint on the top edge of your back panel, on the back bottom panel. You can also do the bottom edge of the back top panel. It's good to just find midpoints everywhere, honestly. It's just helpful. And then also find the midpoint along the top straight edge of your flap. Okay, so take the back bottom piece, laying it right side up. Then take your flap and lay it right side down and line these up right sides together, matching up the midpoint mark. The flap is not as wide as your back panel. Now I'm just gonna baste this on real quick at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now once that's basted on, take your back top panel and lay that right side down on top of the other two layers. I know, it starts getting a little thick, which is why I said I was a little worried about the fusible fleece being in the seams. But I think with the quilt cotton and the water resistant canvas, the thinness of that, I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm just clipping all of these together. And now I'm going to sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning and the end. All right, now we're gonna flip this so the seam allowance goes down towards the back panel. So as you do that, the flap goes up, the top piece goes up, the back panel comes down, and the seam allowance all comes down below this back panel. I know it's bulky. Okay, now we're going to top stitch along this bottom edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance and also at a quarter inch seam allowance. All 
Alrighty, now before I forget, I am going to add my bag tag to the back panel. So to do that, I'm just going to fold my panel in half because I want to find the midpoint down here on the seam, but I don't want to mark it with anything. So I'm just going to pin it. Since I'm using quilt weight cotton, I can use pins here. If you're using vinyl or something like that, you don't want to use a pin. You'll want to use some sort of a vinyl marking tool. Now I'm going to grab a piece of my double-sided tape and I'm just going to put that on the back of my bag tag. And then using this pin, I'm just going to kind of eyeball where I want this. Mm, right around there seems good. Yeah. And then I'm going to try to straighten it out as much as I can. My bag tags are always not straight. That's kind of kind of the charm of the Oakle Roots bags. They're a little wonky and that's okay. All right, so now that I have my bag tag taped on, I'm just gonna go top stitch around all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now let's add our wristlet strap. We're gonna attach it over here on the right side and let's see, I'm going to put mine down. Um, I'm gonna go about three quarters of an inch down from the top edge of the bottom panel right here. I'm trying not to get it too close to the seam because it gets very bulky and I'm trying to limit the amount of bulk here. So I'm going to make sure it's not anywhere in this mess right here. So now I'll just base that on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, let's put this back to the side for just a moment. And now let's grab the front. And if you haven't already, let's mark the midpoint on the top edge. You can also mark the midpoint on the bottom edge if you'd like. So now I'm gonna grab my piping and let's mark three quarters of an inch down from each top corner because we don't want our piping to go all the way up into the seam. So I'm just gonna quickly mark three quarters of an inch down on each top corner here. And now I'm gonna attach my piping. And to start off, I'll have my piping going all the way up to the top, but then I will curve it down in a moment. So I'm just gonna attach my piping once again with the rounded bit going in towards the center and the raw edge lining up the raw edge on the side of the material. I'm attaching it to the right side of the front panel all the way down. And then make sure you clip into the corners down here so that you can turn this. All right, once I have it clipped on, where I have the three quarters of an inch mark, I'm just gonna kind of fold down the piping like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a little sloppy, it'll be okay. I mean, mine is sloppy, nothing I can do about that. I'm just gonna curve it down. All right, and now I'm gonna base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, again using a zipper foot. All right, now we're gonna attach the front and the back. So we're gonna lay them right sides together. If you have your D-ring, make sure it's plopped into the center and just line up these edges. You could take your flap and insert it in the middle. And I, I don't think you need to do that. Just keep your flap out of the way. That's the only thing. We don't want to sew through the flap. So let's, let's clip these right sides together, lining up the edges. They should be the same height. All right, now we're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitching really well at the top. Make sure you keep the flap out of the seam allowance. So if you kind of have to pull it out of the way a little bit, pull it out of the way. Don't sew over the binding on the flap. Just keep it, keep the flap out from underneath the needle. All right, I'm pretty sure I ate some of the piping in the corner down here, but we're gonna leave it because I'm not that picky about it. So I'm gonna trim down the piping on the sides. I'm gonna trim down the corners at the top carefully. And then I'm gonna trim down the corners on the bottom as well. Let me get that one back out. Now let's flip this unit right side out. And we'll see how the piping looks. So now you can get an idea of what your pouch is gonna look like. And if you want, you can go ahead and install the other magnetic snap now. Um, I think we will do that instead of waiting until after the lining is installed because the other magnetic snap only needs to go through the exterior. So let's flatten this out. You can see I ate a little bit of the corners, 
but it's gonna be fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay, so for the other magnetic snap, I like to kind of pull this down, and, and now I don't like it to be super tight, because if it's full, I kind of try to push it up like this, and then give my bag a little looky-loo. There we go. Okay, so now we are gonna wait until after we attach the lining before we do the snap, just because we do still have the seam allowance up here we have to account for, so you might not get it exactly where you want it until this is all sewn. So let's put the exterior to the side. Now take your two lining panels and lay them right sides together. And go ahead and mark the midpoints on the top edges. And I forgot the pattern actually has you turn the whole bag out through a different part. Um, I'm gonna suggest you turn the bag out through the bottom of the lining panel, especially if you're not the best at top stitching and you get a little frustrated with that. It's gonna be easier if you turn the bag out through the bottom down here. So I'm clipping the sides and the bottom together, but I'm leaving the top open. And I'm going to leave a six inch opening on the bottom edge. Since this is the bigger one, I can definitely do that. Six inches on the bottom, centered just like that. And now we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch starting at a 3 8 inch seam allowance at the top. I'm gonna to stitch down, back stitching first, stitch down, and as I go down, I'm gonna increase my seam allowance to a half of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna pivot at the corner, go down. Once I get to this first mark, I'm gonna back stitch well and then lift my needle. I'm not gonna sew between these two marks. I'm gonna to go to the second mark, Again, at a half of an inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, go to the corner, and then as I make my way back up towards the top of the lining, I'm going to decrease my seam allowance to a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So, big thing is, is up here at the top, the seam allowance needs to be 3 8 of an inch, or else it's not gonna line up with the exterior. Down here on the bottom, half of an inch is great so that we don't have a baggy lining. Now I'm going to trim down the seam allowance and I'm only gonna trim where there is stitching. So down here on the opening that I left, I'm not gonna trim the seam allowance down there. This will make it easier to close later. All right, time to put it all together. With your exterior right side out and your lining wrong side out, we're going to insert the exterior into the lining the flap is gonna go down. So go ahead and pull that flap down. And the flap is gonna go right sides together with the side with the zip pocket. If you're turning this out through the zip pocket, make sure that zipper is open. So it's gonna be a very, very, very snug fit. You're mostly just smushing it in there. Just do your best. All right, so those midpoint marks are gonna be helpful here. I'm gonna match up the midpoint marks on the long edges. Remember my lining and exterior are right sides together. I like to clip at the midpoint and then I clip around it as well to just hold it in place better. And then match up the seams really well. Make sure that flap is pushed down. It likes to try to come back up. That flap just wants all the attention. So make sure you match up the seams. They're in the same spot, clip those together. All right, this is the hard part, especially if you're doing the small version because this is, even if you're using lightweight material, this gets stiff, and the smaller this opening is, the harder it is to do. We're gonna sew along this entire top opening at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you're following the pattern, you are gonna leave a four inch opening along one of the edges to turn the bag out later. I'm not doing that. I'm going to use the bottom edge here to turn the bag out, but we're gonna carefully go around at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You might find it easiest to sew from the inside of the bag all the way around, or, if you have a bed on your sewing machine, you can take the bed off the sewing machine and then just kind of tuck this around the arm like that of the sewing machine and go around like that. That's probably what I'm going to do. Now let's pull everything through that hole gently. Don't wanna rip anything. So whichever place you left the hole, if you left the hole in the bottom of this pocket, pull it through there. If you left it in the top, pull it. Bottom of the lining like me, just gently pull your material out. 
All right, I know it's super wrinkly. We can always iron it. It will be fine. So let's tuck in the lining. And I'm going to give this a top stitch first and then do the final magnetic snap. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just kind of rolling down the seam with my fingers. I'm trying to get this as flat as possible. If you wanna use an iron, you can, but depending on your interfacing and your material, it might be a little tricky to get it as flat as you want it with an iron. So I find clips just help. Right here, this seam, that can be bulky, so be careful whenever we're sewing over that, okay? We have to top stitch this. Also remember, the top of the back panel is that little piece, it's not the flap, so pull that flap down. I know that flap just keeps wanting to get in the way, doesn't it? So we're just gonna carefully roll the seam, and push it down, flatten it out, and put a clip on it. Alrighty, it's looking so cute. So now I'm gonna top stitch around this top edge either an eighth of an inch seam allowance or a quarter inch seam allowance, whichever is gonna be easier for you. I know an eighth of an inch, you can start, the needle can start kind of weaving off the edge and then it's just so frustrating. So a quarter of an inch might be easier for you. Uh, either one is gonna look great, but we're gonna go all the way around top stitching the top little bit here. Look how cute that is. Look how stinking cute this is. Oh wow, I know. It looks so good. Unfortunately, I used a, a combination of fabrics that are tilted, and so I can't tell what's straight and what's not straight. So I'm trying to figure out how to place my male end of my magnetic snap. Ideally, I just kind of put the flap down, and then I just push it down, and then I mark where that spot is, and then we're done but I do wanna make sure this is the right height. So I'm gonna grab a ruler real quick, make sure all this is level. Yeah, that's about right. Now you could measure up and make sure it's centered, but sometimes just way, the way things work, it might not be perfectly centered. This part here might not be perfectly centered. So I'm just going to eyeball it by just holding it down like this. I'm gonna just pick it up Luckily with this pattern, since it is a larger size, even if you're making a smaller one, um, if it's a little tiny bit, like a millimeter to one side, up, down, to the left or right, it's gonna be totally fine. Versus sometimes we make these really small wallets where it is, if it's a millimeter off, it's gonna be noticeable. Uh, this is not like that, this is not gonna be noticeable. So what I could do is punch through the lining and the exterior and install my rivet but I do prefer to actually not have it going through both panels for this because if you ever wanna clean the bag out, I want this to be able to be pulled out and cleaned. So I'm not going to punch through the lining, which means I get to kind of tuck the bottom part of my press into my bag. You can always do this. I, I Sometimes we feel very limited with these big presses because we're like, it doesn't quite go. You can just tuck it. I mean, you can see I'm putting it inside the bag. So the bottom part is inside the bag. This is my hole punch die. Top part's over it. I'm just lining up the hole punch with my spot and then punching through. There we go. So let's take that out. Now I'm gonna grab the female end of a snap and that goes on the exterior. And then the cap here, I'm just gonna reach in and snap that on the back. There we go. And now that way the lining can still be pulled out. Everything's good. I like it. Now all I have to do with my rivet press is to change out the dies. So I'm putting in the die that looks like the male end. Snap that in there. And then for this one, I'm just going to kind of pull everything out of the way. So the female end goes down on the bottom die. And then, I don't know if you can see, but the rivet is here on the inside and you can see I just tucked everything out of the way. Okay, let's just tuck in the lining. And now actually what we can do, we can close up the lining. So I'm actually gonna kind of poke the corners out of the lining like this, even though I know it's backwards of what it will be in the end. This just makes it easier to close this all up. So I'm just going to insert my fingers into the hole and kind of tug. And if I need to, I will force this raw edges in, but you should be able to just tug this. The raw edges should go in on their own 
If they don't, you can just kind of roll them in and then just clip along this bottom edge. I do not measure how far I'm rolling in those raw edges. I just make sure they're all the way in there. There we go. And now just for fun, I have one of these little folded tags. I love these, these are from Lord Mormino. I am going to just insert this into the seam. It's just a fun little accent for the bottom of the bag, which I think is fun. So now I'm gonna top stitch along this opening at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now there we go, let's tuck the lining back into the bag and just poke out the corners. Well, that is looking so cute. Let's give this a quick press, but I do want to see how it snaps. Oh yeah, isn't that sweet? That looks so good. So now I'm just going to quickly grab the iron and give it a press. Here we go. One easy, quick press and it is all done. Let's just add the wristlet strap. This is so cute. So let's add the strap over here. And there we go. Easy peasy. Let's see what it looks like compared to the small. So this is the large and here is the small. How stinking sweet are those? All right. What do you think? I love this. So here's the thing. On this first version here, I used the quilt cotton just like I did on the exterior of this one. Uh, but I used Decoville Light which I love the firmness it gives to it. It does feel very like, like it kind of feels like, is that a leather? I don't know, but no, it's, a, it's, it's just a cotton woven material. But this one with the fusible fleece, it's squishy, it's soft, it's so nice. I love this. So this would actually be great for an iPad if you had the right iPad. The pattern actually does suggest different measurements in case you want to fit it to a different size iPad, but yeah, like this would be a great little iPad clutch. Ooh, I like that. I think I need to make another one that's bigger, a little bit taller for my iPad because I would like to have something like this to store my iPad when I'm traveling. So here is the small version. Here is the large version. Here's how they compare. You can see the large is bigger than the small as it should be, but it's it's noticeably bigger, so it will hold different items. I mean, I don't I don't I don't think I have a preference on size. I love them both so much. I would use them for totally different things though. You know, like this would be great for a Kindle, for your iPad, for things like that. This is great for just going out and about when you need a few items. I love these. I just feel like you can't go wrong. Decoville light, fusible fleece, cool cotton, anything at all, vinyl, piping, no piping. So much you can do. I would love to see also if somebody makes the pointed version. I, I really wish I would have done a pointed version. I just didn't honestly think about it when I was cutting out the pattern pieces, but I would like to see like the pointed envelope version as well. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you love making these as much as I do. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Have a great rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys. Bye.